What's that? You feeling a bit nervous? Oh, don't worry about it. It's feeling a bit nervous. It's just a video. Don't worry about it. What are you worrying about? Hello everybody and thank you once again for checking in and today I'm going to show you this. It is the TT Artisan 27mm f2.8 for Fuji film. This is a 40mm equivalent on full frame so although it's 27mm because this is an APS-C sensor slightly smaller than full frame when you shoot with this lens on this sensor, it's as though you, it gives you the same image as if you were shooting 40 millimeter on full frame. Now, if you've seen this channel before, you may be aware that 40 millimeters is one of my favorite focal lengths. It just seems to work beautifully. I love shooting my Konica AR 40 mil lens it's not so long that it's too long and it's not so short that it's too short it's very nearly 35 mil but those five millimeters really make a difference and i don't know 40 mil just works fine so this lens is really my ideal focal length now this is an autofocus lens. In fact, this is the first autofocus lens that TT Artisan have made at the moment. It only comes in Fuji X mount. Um, and my gosh, what tech we've got on the show today. Autofocus, my goodness. We're really getting teched up today. Now, I love shooting my old manual vintage lenses it's just delightful there's nothing like shooting a beautiful old pentax or an olympus i love the tactile feel of those lenses but conversely there's nothing like a bit of auto focus too it frees you up to think about the shot it frees you up to think about your composition and that's all you have to concentrate on you don't need to worry about exposure you don't need to worry have i got the focus right this autofocus lens frees you up to think only on the shot and to concentrate on making your art and that after all that is the name of the game that's the goal of photography and of course you can always shoot it manually if you'd rather just turn your focus switch to manual and you can use the manual focus ring at the front here just like a manual lens it feels very nice turns very nicely very smoothly it doesn't quite have the same feeling as an actual you know focusing helix and brass and gears and grease and so on but it does have a very nice feeling and because this is let me take it off the camera and show you it's a really tiny little thing very very small lens you sit there camera and behave yourself it's a very very small thing diminutive little tiny it's you know really not sizable at all it's not quite a pancake maybe a donut or some other sort of confectionery i'm not sure which but you know it's a it's a small lens and it's very very light as well i believe it's made from magnesium alloy uh, rather uh, aluminium magnesium alloy which is aircraft metal so everything turns nicely and beautifully it's got an aperture ring there because this is a, a lens for Fuji cameras and that turns very very nicely very very smoothly I'm getting my fingers in the way so it goes right the way around from f2.8 there are three clicks between f2.8 and f4 and then I think the rest are Oh no, we've got three between four and 5.6. Three between 5.6 and eight. Yeah, so it's not half stops, it's third stops on this lens. So you can really adjust it, um, you know, very, uh, there's a lot of adjustment on this lens. And then you can take it right the way around to the other end to the A marking. And that is the, um, that is the marking that indicates aperture priority for your Fuji camera so re 
really nice, really tiny, really small. Let me pop it back on the camera so we don't get a dusty sensor. So, right, the markings are, I don't think they're, are they engraved? Well, yeah, they are. The markings are engraved, so that's nice. I thought they were printed, but no, they're actually engraved and it's nice, fine engraving. So that's really good. Um, one thing that I didn't uh, find too easy is this lens cap. It's a tiny little uh, opening there and you've got this very small lens cap and it is a little bit fiddly to get on and off. Um, so what has been supplied, uh, I think partly to obviate that, but partly to act as a hold because you do get quite a bit of flaring on this lens. There's a little ring supplied in the box. So we screw that in. And using that, certainly the filter, uh, rather the lens cap becomes much easier to take on and off and it's much more reachable with your fingers. So that's pretty nice. This is not a particularly fast lens at f2.8 maximum aperture. So this lens is not a blur monster. You're never going to get loads and clouds of, you know, massive blur like you would with a 1.4 or even an f2 or, or, or a 1.2. You're not going to get those massive clouds of blur unless you're very close at the minimum focus distance, then you'll get plenty. Um, but it's not, a, it's not a blur monster, but it does make some nice blur. The blur that it makes is consistently smooth. There's enough to separate the image from the background. So you get some nice separation and definition of your subject. And this lens is a swirler. Yes, this lens makes a little bit of swirl. And I do like a, a swirly lens, a lens that makes swirl in its background blur. That's why I love my Helios uh, 44 lenses. And this too is a bit of a swirler. So you do get that entertaining swirl, uh, uh, sort of a, a feeling of motion in the background that a swirly lens will give you. It's not everybody's cup of tea. I happen to really like it. I think it's really entertaining and really nice. So yeah, so not a huge amount of blur, enough to defocus the background in most situations, give you some separation also. And the blur it makes, I don't know if I mentioned, is consistently smooth. And that's a really important thing. A lot of lenses have harsh spots. Um, you know, you'll find that the blur turns instead of soft, just becomes a little jarring, a little harsh sometimes. This one doesn't do that. It's consistently smooth throughout the range. I couldn't unsettle it. I couldn't make it produce harsh blur. All the blur I made with this lens was really nice, really smooth. Uh, as far as I can see, any subject to camera distance or subject to background distance or any combination thereof, this will give you nice, reliable, consistently smooth blur with a bit of swirl. Um, now then, it's not a high contrast lens. It's not a low contrast lens. It's not washed out, but it's just not a very, very high, you know, high contrast, very deep blacks, very bright whites. It's not that kind of lens. It gives a softer image. So because of that, the colors are slightly restrained, but in a really nice way. They're very delicate, but they've still got plenty of saturation. And whereas some lenses will give you loads of contrast and, uh, you know, really pumped up colors as though you'd just gone and turned up the saturation dial to max. This one doesn't do that. This one is more discerning. This lens is gentler than a lot of others, or at least than some others. Um, and it gives those delicate, restrained, gentle kind of images that, you know, I, I find really beautiful. Actually, I think it makes fantastic images. And I think the color is really nice as well. Very unusual, very unique uh, color signature, actually. Um, and I think that's because of the relatively low contrast of the lens. 
The autofocus is pretty quick. I'm glad to say there is very little lag and it focuses almost immediately. Let me demonstrate. I'll focus now. Where will I focus? I'm going to focus on the uh, on the on the camera. Oh, wait a minute. We're on manual. So that's pretty quick. Let's go f further away. Back to the camera. Further away. So that is pretty much instant focusing. There's almost no lag uh, with that. Put my glasses on. See what I'm supposed to be, be talking about. Um, yeah, so, so almost no lag. It can be less good in lower light, but it has to be very low to really upset it. I did, in very low light, just testing it and seeing what it could do, I did find that on one or two occasions it couldn't find focus, but that was in very low light on low contrast backgrounds. Generally, the brighter the light, the better the contrast in the background. Um, you're going to find uh, quicker autofocus, but absolutely no complaints from the speed. In very low light, it does struggle a little bit, but then any autofocus lens will. It's a little bit noisy as it focuses. You can hear those motors running, but, you know, that's all right. That's just part of its bag of tricks. That's part of how it works. The software can be updated and uh, I'll show you uh, what I mean. So <clears throat> rather than the ordinary kind of lens cap, this is the box, by the way, I'll just show you the box. Um, usually TT Artisan lens boxes have been gray, but I think the autofocus ones, it looks like they're doing a black color scheme for those. So it's not an ordinary lens cap. It's a special fancy electronic lens cap. There's the electrical contacts. Um, and we've got a USB-C socket here. So this is a very fancy, very intelligent uh, I-type, E-type electronic kind of rear cap. And you pop this on the back of the lens and you can actually update the lens's software uh, using this. So it may be that, uh, you know, if I did that, maybe that would make it a little bit quicker in uh, very low light, perhaps. Now, most of the images I shot with this lens, I shot wide open at f2.8. I do like to shoot wide open if I can do. And as you can see, this lens is very, very sharp wide open. It's one of the sharpest lenses I've tested recently, actually. It really is uh, very sharp indeed. Um, in fact, it's so sharp that there's no great increase in sharpness when you stop it down. I really couldn't see an increase in sharpness. There may well be one if you zoom in close enough. In fact, I'd be surprised if there wasn't. But just in, uh, you know, just looking at the shots, just looking at the images as they appear on screen or in the viewfinder, I couldn't see any difference in sharpness. And you can shoot this one wide open all day long at f2.8 if that's what you want to do it's certainly what i wanted to do stopping down does get rid of dark corners though it does have a little bit of darkening in the corners which surprised me it does have some vignetting but it's a fairly small lens and it's it's not a particularly long lens so it surprised me not particularly fast either. So it surprised me that, that there was a little bit of vignetting in the corners. Uh, I quite like a little bit of vignetting, actually. I think it adds character to a shot and focuses your attention on the subject. But, you know, it's not everybody's cup of tea. If you're not keen on it, stop down to f4 to reduce it or f5.6 to completely remove it. Now, I should also talk about flare with this lens. It is a bit of a flare prone lens, um, at least compared to other modern lenses that I've tested. Uh, and you do have to be quite careful that you don't catch the sun at the wrong angle. If the sun comes and hits this front element, especially without this little ring on here, without this little hood, this does give some improvement actually, but without this on, it is quite a flare prone 
lens. Uh, so you do have to be careful, so you know, you might have the sun here just in front of you. Be careful that you don't turn and just catch a glint of those rays just bouncing across that front element because that will wash your image out. Um, so yeah, be careful of flare. Use this little ring uh, and that will reduce it. So generally, it's a light, portable, go anywhere, take anywhere lens and it looks really cool i think on a fuji film camera it really suits the camera and uh, you know generally is in keeping with the sort of design principles of the camera its tiny size belies its abilities and it makes great images i've had loads of fun shooting this little lens it's a lovely little thing uh it's fun to use it's very light, very portable, and it's very powerful too. So, yeah, a really nice little piece of glass. So, that, I think, is about it from me for today. Many, many thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, if you found it useful, please do chuck us a sub ring the bell subscribe like and do all of those youtube -y type things and that will help the channel many many thanks go to subscribers thanks for your support and uh, thanks for your continued support it really is great and i really do appreciate it and many many thanks also go to our patrons who make possible what we do on this channel we couldn't do on this channel what we do without the support of patrons so many thanks to the patrons so that's it from me many thanks for watching and please do join me next time if you're not too busy for a spot more xenography cheerio all